Hello everyone, it's Anusha Said, your resident illustrator extraordinaire, and I am wearing makeup for the first time in quite a while. It has been a while since my last studio vlog, and there are a couple of reasons for that. For pretty much the whole of February, me and Dan have been living with my in-laws, hence his parents, out in Windsor. We wanted kind of like a change, mostly we wanted to stay with his parents for a bit, and um, it's been nice being out in the suburbs. We have more room, we have more sunlight. Kitty has plenty of space to move around in. And right now we just came back to Toronto to pick up some more clothes and then I wanted to bring my filming supplies and everything. And then we're going back and then we're just gonna be there indefinitely, which is kind of cool. I love his parents, so it's really nice. But anyway, that's pretty much why I haven't done any filming. Um, I did three videos in January and then only one in February and YouTube is mad at me for it. It's punishing me, it's like giving me messages being like your engagement is down, your views are down, and I'm like listen, I'm trying to live my life. Instagram is already giving me grief for not posting every single day. I don't need that kind of toxic overworking grind culture mentality from YouTube as well. And yet I'm going to end up probably making up for February by posting a bunch of videos in March. I literally just finished filming the pricing video. I was so, so antsy to film it. I didn't bring my filming equipment with me to Windsor because I was like, I have so much work to do. I have other stuff to get into. But I did work. I typed up the pricing video early on and then I was like, okay, I kind of want to film this now. And I was waiting and waiting and then we were like, you know, let's just go back and pick up your filming stuff. And so I just filmed it. I think it went pretty well. I'm gonna probably post it tomorrow. We'll see what the response is like. I try to be as informative as possible because pricing is just like everyone needs help with it and I don't think I'm the best person to give that kind of advice and yet I did it anyway. <laughs> I don't know. I hope it goes well. I'll let you know tomorrow, day after or whatever. But let me recap what I've done in February. I don't have any video evidence for you but I'm halfway, more than halfway done with Monster and Boy. I should be done with it March 10th if I follow my schedule, which I've been doing, which is great. All of my other projects have just been delayed. <laughs> I submitted work for that pitch thing. I think that should be almost done, but that magazine spread, the book cover, literally everything else has just been I've submitted and I'm just waiting for feedback so that's why February like I was able to just concentrate on Monster but I feel like March everyone's gonna get back to me with like here's your work and I'm like Ugh, okay fine I guess like the other main thing I've been working on in February is just making merch ideas have some sticker ideas planned I am working on that throw which I'll probably film tomorrow and work on tomorrow or the day after so you'll see that don't worry about it and I've ordered a bunch of supplies so I can start making my own jewelry and I made some jewelry designs so that will be really fun the main thing I'm working on today is editing that pricing video and then um, I think I mentioned a couple of vlogs ago that I was selected to be a judge for a bookmark contest that is hosted by the Toronto Public Library. They do this every year. They get like a ton of entries and so I helped to select a couple of the winners and then we have the award ceremony happening on the 27th of March and so I have to prepare a little workshop for the winners as well as all of the winners, they get copies of my books and so the copies of the books just arrived and I'm going to sign all of them, you know, Dear Marsha, <laughs> Marsha's not a kid's name, Dear Billy, mm, congrats on the big win and keep reading buddy and then I'll do a little drawing and then sign it with my name and really personalize it so you'll see that I've got I think 12, there were 12 winners I think so I'm gonna do that. And then that's it. It's gonna be a chill studio vlog and then probably if I end up doing another vlog that will be at my in-laws place. So yeah. Actually I got some art mail which I'm super excited about. So this is um, Ghost Puff's work also known as Mona. Um, I recently discovered her artwork. I think it's so beautiful. I have been really getting into traditional illustrators. I'm very jealous of 
how they how they do their brush pencils how they be doing that the thing that they do i don't i don't know but yeah i bought this um original gouache i think pencil and gouache painting absolutely obsessed with this i think it's so so beautiful and i'm really excited to have like a new piece of artwork for my above desk area i'm glad that like it does have like a little hook on top over there but ghost puff mona also sent so much other awesome stuff which i was really excited by and so i don't know if this is a bookmark oh look at this look at this thank you so much anusha i hope these goods bring you lots of joy also the washi tape's really cute the most cute frog here the most cute frog here it's a postcard, but I don't have any friends, so I'm just gonna keep this postcard for myself. I have two stickers, or so you think, because there's also a hidden sticker here. I very much appreciate it. There's so much stuff in this nice package. I really appreciated her packaging. It came in like the tissue with like the twine around it. And I'm getting lots of inspiration for eventually when my shop opens up. I do want to make, because like so far my packaging has been really nasty <laughs> it's just like not personalized at all i just like put an art into like a cello cello baggie into a craft envelope and it's just like bye but i do want to personalize my art packages a bit more so it's a nice experience for my customers and i was very inspired by her packaging or sorry their packaging um i don't want to presume and so yeah, beautiful, beautiful work. I'm so excited to stick these up, especially these little stickers. I'm super excited to put these stickers on my little sketchbook because my sketchbook is bare right now. But yes, thank you. Thank you, Mona Ghost Puff. Thank you. All right, so it is Tuesday, March 2nd, and I actually have quite a lot of stuff to do today, so I'm really excited to show you guys what I'm up to, and I'm actually having a little bit of trouble figuring out what to even start off with. So on the agenda today, um, if you guys remember from my last studio vlog, I did, uh, I started off doing some sketches for an editorial illustration for like a children's magazine. Um, that's still not done yet. Um, they had like some internal uh, reviewing going on, which took a little bit of time. And so they just got back to me yesterday. Uh, I can get started on the final art, but they did want me to do a couple of revisions first to the sketch. So they wanted me to age up the characters a little bit so they're a bit bigger. And then also they didn't want to see kids fighting, which fair enough, fair enough. It'll be more of the passive aggressive, uh, low key kind of fighting. We definitely don't want to encourage that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, so what I'm probably going to do is work on just fixing up those sketch revisions right now and then send that over for review and hopefully they get back to me by tomorrow with approval and then I can get to work on the final art which I think would be really fun to show you guys so hopefully that will be in this week's vlog. I'm gonna hang up all of the cool new things that I got namely um, Ghost Puff's beautiful original illustration which I bought recently which I just showed you these stickers I actually stuck up on my on my iPad. As, is it blurry? I can't tell. On my iPad as well as my, my notebook. So that's up over there. And so I'm going to hang up my painting over there. And I actually got one more thing. Um, let me show you that really quick before my thing runs out of battery. Okay, so number one is the super, super cute frame that I got. Um, has like that really cute boho rattan, rattan vibe. Uh, that's gonna go up somewhere on the wall. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna put in here yet. Uh, I think, actually, you know what? The moth print would be really cute in here. Um, this is from Don Lo. I think it's an original, actually. I'm not sure. But yeah, I think this will look really cute in here. So I will make space for this. And then the second thing I got is this absolutely beautiful beautiful metal gold garland um i think it looks so cool but yeah i have i'm not sure where i'm gonna put this where i have room for this like i'm wondering if i should maybe like put it hanging above the top but i won't be able to do anything until i buy some sticky hooks and so i'm gonna go out to the store and get those little sticky hooks because I don't want nails on my wall. 
I'm gonna get like the same ones that I used over here. I think that should be strong enough to hold it. But yeah, hopefully tomorrow when I get those sticky hooks in, I'll be able to arrange my wall even nicer. And I still have to get rid of this. I don't want you here. Maybe you can take that place. The other thing that I wanted to do today was that last week or maybe two weeks ago, I started working on my ideas for my Throw & Co blanket, which I also mentioned in the last vlog. And so I illustrated a couple of designs that I was interested in that could look nice on a blanket and I did it in my sketchbook. So thankfully the sketchbook is serving a purpose. And so I did like four, I think, different designs and then I put it to a vote on Instagram and then I ended up choosing one which I will show you right now, which one I chose. Okay, so I had this initial idea which would have been, I think, really cute um house island in the middle of the sea then this one because i think fruits are really in these days but um i was informed that natalie koromoto who's a super cool artist she does have a similar design already i definitely did not intend that i actually didn't see her blanket design um but i definitely did not want to be copying her even unintentionally so that is out of the picture but anyway this was a design I thought was really cute as well, little star catcher. And then this I thought was super cute. Uh, it's cozy time. This would have been great on a blanket. Maybe if um, I'm allowed to, I might do another blanket if they let me. And then I had this idea as well, which I thought was really funny. Um, you know, those rugs um, that I always wanted one of as a kid, like the carpets that showed a whole city. What if you had that, but as a blanket? So I was thinking about that, but maybe that would have been a little bit too much and I don't want to draw any cards. So in the end, we decided on this one. So I will try to illustrate this today and then send that out for submission. And then we'll see eventually one day it will turn into a blanket. But I still like this one. I'm thinking maybe I'll turn these into just postcard prints if people are into that. Actually, what else have I been working on these days? Um, I love Katie Kordesh's art. These are inspired by her. Um, I am designing some packaging, new packaging stuff. And so I was working out some designs for that. That will be a whole other video. Oh, this actually I'm really excited about. I was just drawing this cat for fun. And then I thought this would make a really cute sticker set um like a sticker sheet or something so i did these designs and i also did these so maybe sometime this week maybe i'll try to illustrate these as well and get that ready for a sticker sheet this was inspired by maddie carp's art she had like this illustration of a girl with like these star star hair strands that was very cute very inspired by that and i just thought this was cute Anyway, that is mostly what I've been drawing in my sketchbook these days. And this is a ghost puff sticker again. I hope to cover this entirely up with stickers. I cannot wait to buy more stickers from my favorite artists. In terms of monster and boy, I'm super happy that I'm more than halfway done with these. Um, March 10th is still my deadline. So I have about seven days to complete do, 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 do all of these, which I think is gonna go pretty well. I'm really glad that I planned out my days in advance because that's really helped me out. And yeah, take my advice, you guys. Plan out your illustrations, especially if you have a long book. Oh, and I don't know if I shared this before or not. Maybe I only mentioned it in my Instagram stories, but I got a overhead like camera mount thing. Super excited to try this out today. And I'm hoping that this will make it easier for me to film while I'm drawing. And we're actually gonna try to test this out right now. I wonder, because it's got like this little metal clamp thing. I don't know if it can attach underneath here. That might be a little bit too much. Otherwise, I might just do it on my desk. But first thing we're going to do actually today is I have got some books to sign. This is, oops, this is kind of a weird angle, but I just set up my crane <laughs> overhead mount thingy in a way so that I'm able to do the overhead in a little bit so you're gonna see me from a very weird angle right now but anyway i got this big old big 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 package and this is from the toronto public library i am judging a bookmark contest or technically i already judged it 
this is with yeah the Toronto Public Library they do this every year where they have a bookmark contest for kids across the GTA and I got to judge that which was really cool so much really cute artwork so I'm gonna cut open this box full of books and we're gonna see what we have and I'm going to sign them all up right now So as we open it up, we see we've got Kids Scientists. I actually don't promote this book enough. It's really cool. All about um, famous scientists when they were kids. Super cool. So we got this. We've got Bug Girl. Um, okay, so there should be 12 copies. Oh, and we've got Bilal Cooksall on the bottom. Coffee mug stain sorry about that sorry my desk is really gross but here we go we've got kid scientists we've got bug girl and we have bilal cooks doll over here so let me see i think we have all of the books so i'm just gonna go sign them one by one i think it would be really cute if i included a little doodle as well so we're just gonna sign a couple of these on camera and then i'm gonna try to get the rest done on my own time. Okay, uh, this is a good spot. This is a good spot. All the books have been signed now. Whoops. Actually, the funny thing is, let me see. One winner. Her name is Anushka. And I have like a personal vendetta against anyone with a similar name to me. Uh, nothing against Anushka, but more so in the fact that like people always forget what my name is and they you know, can never spell it right. And um, I am sick of it and <laughs> so when I hear like a similar sounding name I'm just like you they're talking about you not me um, actually the funny thing is is that when I was in third fourth grade when I was in gym class we had like a new teacher coming in and then when they were doing attendance she called out my name as Anushka and as like a shy little kid and she was going through the names really quickly I was like yeah here and then this happened like a couple of times where like i just like couldn't butt in to be like that's actually not my name and then after a couple of times it was just too awkward to say anything so for like half a year i just went by anushka by her until eventually like someone was like uh actually miss that's not her name her name is anusha and the teacher got mad at me for not saying anything so i have beef with this anusha kid just kidding no i don't
she is a very talented young artist and I wish her all the best. Okay, so I've signed up all of these books now and I'm gonna put them back into the box and then mail it out sometime today so that the library has them and then on March 27th, I believe, that is when we're gonna have our virtual ceremony. Usually this would have been in person and I would have awarded each of these kids with the book and um, something else, I can't remember. But it's all online now, it's on Zoom. So I'm gonna be listing out the awards online and then I will also be doing a short 15 minute workshop for the kids as well. And so I have to prepare that. I'm trying to figure out something that will be easy to do for kids between the ages of like five and 15 and can be easily taught within 15 minutes and is also interactive. So I'm trying to figure out a couple of options. I did something last, last year in 2019 um, for this one kids convention thing where I basically the workshop was, was that I asked kids, I basically taught them that like, hey, I'm a character designer. What we're gonna do today is that I am giving you guys a prompt. We are gonna be designing a kids TV show about superheroes. We have four characters. One is like a super strong character with superpowers. Uh, someone has plant powers. Someone is like a robot. And then we have like a sidekick animal character. I gave like descriptions for each of these characters and I told the kids using these prompts, I want you to design your uh, made up kids cartoon TV show. Um, so I'm thinking that that might be good a good quick little workshop that I might repurpose for um, this thing that's coming up. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna put these back into the box and mail it out. Also, my worst fears had been confirmed. Scarf that I've been working on. I thought that <laughs> magically, I don't know, the, uh, the weird diagonal that's going on would fix itself by its own, but a lot of people in the comments were right in saying that I most likely just like added a stitch on every time. As much as it pains me, I think I have to start over. So I am going to very sadly just take this apart one by one by one. I think, oh my god, like this is like the third time I'm restarting, but I think it's for the best because I don't want to end up with a scarf because like I think I'm learning. I think I've kind of figured out what went wrong the first time. I don't want to end up with a scarf that's like perfect for most of it and then just like the end is like a weird diagonal because I noticed that I was supposed to start off with like 21 knots and then because of my adding on a new knot every time, by the end of it, I had 35. I added uh, 14 more? I don't know, I don't know how to math. I'm an artist, not a mathematician. Kind of scary how easy it is to unravel an entire scarf. Look at that. Okay. okay, got my big old yarn. I'm gonna attempt this again tonight. So I actually forgot to bring my yarn and stuff with me when we went to Windsor, which I actually really regret it because while we were there, um, oh, I didn't even tell you about my time over there. Um, it's been really chill. It's um, it's great because my in-laws live out in the suburbs near like a forest trail there's like literally no one around so we do have the ability to you know walk around outside enjoy nature being in toronto it kind of sucks because we're just like stuck in the apartment all day it's not really safe to go outside we're all still in lockdown but also the fact that like being in a city is just so condensed that you can't just like go out on a walk outside without bumping into like a million people and the weather's just not that great anyway. Like it's kind of, it's the same temperature here that it is in Windsor, but like because we're in the city, big buildings everywhere, we're living in a wind tunnel. So it's just like so much colder. And so you kind of want to enjoy going out on a walk outside. So for all of January, I was super depressed because I was at home all day and it was dark and dreary. Um, thankfully there's a bit of sun today, but uh, being out in the suburbs really improved my mental health and um, having um, some company there was really nice. Kitty's actually still there right now. 
uh, we didn't think because like we just came back to get our some more clothes so i wanted to get my filming equipment and also i have like some like an appointment to attend to and um pick up mail water the plants and stuff so it didn't make sense to bring kitty back and then all the way there because it's such a long drive so she is there and i'm missing her so much i picked up this peanuts knitting kit isn't that so freaking cute yeah so it's essentially a charlie brown inspired hat and the box says that it's easy okay and i was like oh i left my scarf at home but i think i've got the basics now and i can totally do this and then i open it up and i look at the handbook that it provides and i do not understand a single thing it's absolutely ridiculous um they gave like really beautiful colored scarf uh yarn though but yeah they are mentioning techniques like because I only know how to knit right now, I don't know how to purl. So apart from knitting, I need to know how to do a purl stitch, a decrease, an increase, and then they had one weird, the fair aisle pattern. So I was reading this and I started crying because I could not understand it and I was like, you know what, this is not for beginners. My premiere is starting soon and I'm so excited and I'm really nervous. I really hope people enjoy it because I spent several, several weeks working on the script I spent all of yesterday uh, editing, actually two days, it took quite a long time. Um, and the reason why it takes such a long time is that I had like someone ask me, you know, how do you memorize your script when you're working off the script? Like, how do you do that? And the thing is, I don't. So before my video is edited, I literally, okay, so I'm sitting on the bed, I have my laptop on my lap, and I have my script in front of me, and sentence by sentence I film. I read out loud a sentence, look back down, memorize the next sentence, and then say it out loud. And I have to do multiple takes because I forget. So let's see. I think I probably do it here. In this case, I'll try to see if I can negotiate for something in between their budget and mine. And if it's out of their budget, I'll have to decide for myself. If you can see I keep looking I'm down at my on. screen. Just absorbing information. In this case, I'll try to see if I can negotiate for something that's in between their budget and mine. And if it's completely out of their budget, I'll have Take to decide two. for myself if it's a project that I really want to. I'm just like, I'm going to change position now. If you find yourself being approached for. If you find yourself. If you find yourself <laughs> being approached for lots of projects. If you find yourself being approached for a lot of projects to the point that you are getting overwhelmed or that you are rejecting them. So yeah, you can see it's like take after take after take. So my total file length was two hours of recorded content. Like by the end of it, my voice really hurt. But after editing and cutting it down, it was about an hour because I have so many pauses of looking down at my screen and like take after take after take. So it's not efficient at all. I really want to get one of those like the thing that newscasters have like having like a scrolling thing in front of the camera so you can just like oh a teleprompter that's right I really want to get a teleprompter I don't know if that, that's a thing that I can get and how expensive that would be but that would be way more efficient than just like reading off of a paper but yeah 30 more minutes until the premiere starts and I'm so nervous hopefully it goes well and I will talk I will update you when it's done. The lighting is quite nice here as well. Also, do you like my nails? I've really been getting into lavender. I blame Radia. So cute. I actually got some pretty cool mail, by the way. Um, so there's this artist who I really, really like. His name is Andy Harkness. He is a, I believe he works at Sony Pictures Animation, but I could be wrong. Um, he's super talented and he recently wrote and illustrated a picture book called Wolf Boy and he was really kind enough to send me like an advance copy. Here it is. I'm really 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 excited because he's been posting updates on social media of like, his process and it's so cool you guys. The entire book is done with play-doh or is it play-doh or clay? I'm not sure but as you can see like it's so cool. He worked with gray play-doh and then created these kinds of scenes and then photographed them and then painted them digitally so they would have a little bit of color and so you end up with like these absolutely beautiful 3d scenes i hope you can see them 
like just look at that detail I, I find it really cool that you can even see his little fingerprint marks on the clay but anyway i'm super excited to have this in my picture book collection don't do not look at me do not look at me yeah i'm super excited to have this in my collection he sent over like a little paper so it says hello i am i don't know if he's british or not but i'm just gonna pretend to give him a british accent because i want to hello i'm beyond excited that you <laughs> never mind never mind i'm beyond excited that you are about to read wolf boy this has been a true labor of love and i hope you have as much fun reading it as i have had making it p.s the story pairs well with warm milk and a slice of pie how freaking cute last thing he sent blue play-doh sorry <laughs> blue play-doh um i just haven't opened it yet and i'm very excited too because i bet it smells so good um i'm pretty sure Play-Doh is non-toxic to eat. I've always wanted to eat Play-Doh. I shouldn't. Forbidden. Oh my god. Why do they make Play-Doh smell so good, you guys? This color is beautiful. I, re I really want to eat this. But okay, I'm going to make a very quick little kitty for you guys. This will be good practice for when I eventually make those clay earrings that i keep talking about i'm actually just waiting for a shipment of them they're called eye pins it's like the little hooky things that you put on top and then um mildly terrifying kitty but yeah thank you andy i'm gonna try my best not to eat this later squish
it is wednesday my dudes um it's a beautiful bright sunny day today something i haven't seen in quite a while which makes me really happy love me that vitamin what is it d yeah love me that vitamin d so what did i get up to yesterday i mostly did monster like i do every day i fixed up those revisions for that children's magazine and then most of the day was held up because of the youtube premiere which thankfully went really well uh quite a few people showed up and they were all very kind asked a lot of really great questions so i'm really happy with the turnout i'm really happy with the response and i can't wait to film another one so that's going to be negotiations i'm going to wait a little bit until i get that done um but yeah so today i'm going to start off by doing my daily monster and boy sketches and then we're gonna do the throw and coat finally i haven't done any painting in quite a while it's uh all of the projects that i've been working on since the start of the year have all been like in the early stages so a lot of sketching a lot of like early development whatever stuff no painting whatsoever so i'm really excited to get back into painting mode and actually do this so i'm going to show you a before and after of my children's magazine thing so you can see like what notes were put in and like what i had to change and whatnot so i want to show you that because i think that is interesting and then we will move on to throw and co sometime in the afternoon after i finish monster i hope you can see this clearly but as you can see this is the original sketch that i, I submitted um earlier in february and so the main remarks that they had, it was this page as well as the second page, but I'm not really going to show you that. Um, so what they wanted to see was mom move down a bit and then the kids aged up. So bigger, taller, and also they did not want to see them fighting, which is totally fair. Um, I was hesitant to like draw them fighting in the first place, but like the art note said, uh, or the story says that they are fighting. So I assume that meant like physical fighting, but obviously you should not be showing that in a children's magazine so that was my bad and then over here they wanted to see uh the family less scared uh and more relieved that the lion has left the household and then they wanted um this to be moved back and this to be moved forward so here you can see the changes that were made um yeah mom moves, has moved down a bit the kids are much older and yeah, family is in front, lion is in the back, and actually, there was one more thing. There was a background here. Hold up. Yeah, sorry. And then you have, like, destruction in the background because they wanted some background as well. So this to this. I'm going to show you again. From this to this. Revisions, revisions, revisions. It's all good. I have submitted this for review, and hopefully it's all good, and then I can start with the final colors for this. All right, T. So we're gonna get to work on the Throw and Co blanket. So Trevor was kind enough to send over a template. Um, I think it's like 4,000 by 3,000 or something. So the first thing we're gonna do is that we are gonna look through my sketchbook. Where is that? Okay, I'm gonna take a quick photograph of this and upload it up onto. I am obsessed with this overhead mount. I'm so glad I got this. Okay, iPad. I think this should be good enough for my initial sketch. And now let's get to work on just painting over this. Now, I don't really have a palette in mind. I think I'll just go with my usual palette that I like to work with. I'm thinking if I want to go for a something limited or not. I think I'm going to like try a couple of different color concepts out before I finalize what I want to do. But yeah, let's just start with a couple of different color concepts.
I'm all done with my illustration um, colors might be a little bit different um, in real life than it is on camera so maybe I'll put up uh, on the side over here uh, but yeah I'm really happy with how it turned out you guys um, I used a lot of like these new brushes that I bought from uh, these are the LG aqua wheel as well as a pencil pack I found both of them on creative market but yeah I ended up like getting a lot of really good texture on here um adding fun little details like the trees in the back the flag the swing and whatnot and so yes i'm super happy with this i just sent it over to trevor and we'll see what he says and if it's okay and then he can start printing these into some blankets it was super exciting oh wait the hooks right here Right here. Uh, lower. Actually fits perfectly. It's great. You're gonna hang that up too? Yeah. Nice. So the mop was already there, but I'm gonna and here is my new wall space set up I'm actually really happy with this garland I think it's super pretty I might have to 
change it up a little bit. I, I do think it's hanging a little bit too low still, so I might fix up the side. Um, but otherwise, I've got my new Ghost Puff artwork, original piece. I've got Dawn's art in a frame. I've also got the froggy print up over here. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy with how it's shaping up. I think it's so pretty. Last night I also restarted my scarf and I think it's going pretty well. I definitely know what not to do, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. I hope it was interesting and I'll see you again next week, hopefully. Bye!